we can no longer uh, heavily depend on, on fossil fuels if we, if we move forward from now. Um, we have a problem with our CO2 emissions, we have a problem with our climate, uh, plastic waste ends up ending up in the ocean. So I feel like, especially within industry, we really need to do something and we really make a need to make a step. Man produces uh, 350 million tons uh, polymer per year and uh, only 9% of that is recycled. 9%. And the reuse is then in, in most instances in lower end applications. 4 million tons end up each year in, in the oceans. Yeah, and that is of course disastrous. Well, I've seen with my own eyes in Asia and in, in the Caribbean what a disastrous effect that has on, on, on the animals. Unfortunately, still most of it ends up in landfilling uh, or waste applications or in incineration, so really burning uh, the plastics for energy recovery. But at the same time, we also generate a lot of CO2, which of course is uh, in the end, especially for our climate, not what we want. And for me also key in that is that if the value of the product at the end of its life is high, and then, then people will not dispose of it. I think that the focus should be on upcycling and the BICEPS project is typically an example here where we fully aim at the upcycling and the material. We can really make materials that, that, that make a huge step in terms of properties. So we can advance the properties from a single PET bottle into a high-end application uh, product. We can make variety of properties of materials. We can vary the stiffness, we can vary the hardness, we can vary the, the looks and the aesthetics of the materials. That opens also opportunities for different application areas uh, for these materials. Well, I think uh, with the multi-purpose pilot plants we have uh, available on site, we can already test and see what's the best materials to design and how to design the process best to make the next steps. We should aim at recycle to prime properties. We feel the, the urge to, to, to really do something new with them and make them yeah, give them more value to basically upcycle them into towards uh, different or new applications. In this installation, we can upcycle waste from bottles or carpet, TPEs, to thermoplastic polyester elastomers, for example, to make flexible cables, new carpets with a better feeling, or coatings with improved barrier properties. Polyesters and polyamides can be readily depolymerized and purified. Adjusting monomer mix compositions and repolymerizing gives the desired TPEs. There is a great variety of post-consumer and bio-based monomers to select from and even more TPEs to produce. In the first reactor, the circular feedstock is dissolved and depolymerized. In the second reactor, the composition is tuned and polymerization is simultaneously started. The polymerization is finalized. Finally, the new polymer is extruded, cooled and chopped into pellets. With the new 30 kg polymer samples produced in the pilot plant, compounds, components and user goods can be produced for performance checks. This offers ample opportunities to improve Circular Materials business. This is a unique process that can only be applied for polyesters and polyamides. And, and, yeah, and that relates to the circularity as you will find in nature. Huh? Nature builds up huh? molecules huh? to high molecular weight. Huh? And, and yeah, when they have uh, ended their function in nature, huh? nature can degrade it back huh? to the original monomers. And then, then the other parts of, of the nature will take those monomers again and build up the polymers. By having access to this pilot plant, the whole process is speed up tremendously. And it's really cool that we can immediately, after we find something out, test whether it also makes sense on a larger scale. And that's where the multi-purpose pilot plant is really fundamental. Here we have a pilot plant that is available for all of the companies in Holland or in Europe that have a similar ambitions. So this should form an open innovation platform for, uh, for this whole 
polycondensation world. There is a reason that plastics are there. They are cheap, they are uh, very light, they are very versatile, so, so we, cannot, we, we cannot live as a society without plastics, but it needs to be circular. Recycled pad is much more expensive at the moment compared to virgin pads. The driving force towards those materials uh, and yeah, to pay more for those kind, type of materials. Yeah, we still need some, uh, some mindset change there. Uh. We need to think in a new way. And on the one hand in the industry we'd like to fade away a little bit from, uh, from using fossil fuels. But I think uh, if we wouldn't, would like to make our uh, economy a little bit more circular, and strive also for sustainable solutions. We need to we need to do something about this. And if we if we would be able to tackle all these uh, these challenges, I wouldn't say problems, but the challenges, uh, I think then we really have a technology at hand that can really make uh, make the transition. We're really making the first steps, but it's not so simple. Uh, so thereby, combining knowledge on the academic. Uh, level as well as uh, industrialization uh, approaches in one project, I think that is a great uh, opportunity for the future. Yeah, we have very talented young people in the team and yeah, that, that energizes me always very much. Yeah, those people are very eager. My generation had the luxury yeah, to be on the planet in its best uh, time, uh, but uh, yeah, then the time period that my children and grandchildren will, uh, will envisage will, will not be uh, that, that nice, we need to change. We definitely have to act now, yes.